Well, uh, in the last class, we had discussed about uh, basic concepts about climate change. Uh, what are the policy interventions at the global level and at the national level that is in India? So uh, today we're going to discuss uh, the issues of the problems which are you know being encountered with with regards to climate change. Uh, for instance by taking the issue of the eastern Himalayas and then and, and more importantly this particular uh, discussion would be you know based on the assessment and report which is being uh, submitted by the International Center for uh, Integrated Mountain Development which is based in Kathmandu uh, which was submis submitted way back in 2010. So, in, in, in this uh, you know, lecture, we are going to look at the way in which how the mountain biodiversity is uh, you know, pretty much vulnerable uh, when it comes to you know, the issues of climate change and uh, what are the kind of you know, uh, potential uh, drivers of you know, climate change and, and uh, to, to what extent it, it poses a certain amount of you know, stresses on the uh, biodiversity of the region. So, one can perhaps you know, think about uh, how this diverse biodiversity or the biological diversity uh, which is pretty much you know, uh, uh, important, uh, more importantly in the, in, in, in the regions. So, to have a uh, you know, better understanding, uh, let us begin with trying to look at what uh, uh, mountain biodiversity is. Now, as uh, I had you know already outlined that uh, the mountains you know are, are, are usually where a lot of you know things are being dependent for instance the water reservoir at the same time uh, the medicinal plants and then uh, various uh, floral and fauna at the same time you know there are a lot of you know species which which you know, made up uh, a lot of, you know, uh, important ingredient uh, to the element of, of, of this, uh, the whole ecosystem. So, mountains are, are, are one of the, you know, uh, most uh, vulnerable and uh, uh, hazardous environments uh, in, in, in the world and, and because uh, for the simple reason that they sort of harbor uh, a rich repositories of uh, biodiversities. Now, based on some of the study, they have sort of identified that uh, mountains are actually the real indicators of climate change. So, the rising temperature and, 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 and which, 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 which of course uh, pose a lot of, you know, challenges in terms of the uh, decline in, you know, deforestations the incision you know uh, rainfall at the same time it also you know poses a lot of you know in, in terms of uh, sudden floods and also a long durations of drought. So therefore it has in some sense hampered the um, uh, mountainous regions, landscape so on and so forth. So therefore when it comes to you know uh, climate change uh, mountains in some sense has uh, become one of one of the you know major important you know indicators. So in, in, in the study which is made by Beniston in, in, in the context of climate change, mountain could actually suffer a lot uh, wide ranging of you know environmental and uh, socio-economic impacts. Uh, because uh, it, it is again home to not just about the floral and fauna which is rich, which have a rich biodiversity, but also uh, these mountainous regions are again uh, inhabited by the uh, ethnic or uh, uh, marginalized communities who have had such sort of like uh, and uh, uh, enormous amount of uh, knowledge system which is embedded in the local ecosystem. Now, for example, if you take the case of the hydro hydrological cycle and, and this in, in turn would actually, you know, disrupt 
or, or alter the distribution seasonality and uh, amount of precipitations and also result in uh, river runoff. So ultimately affecting not only the mountain water sets but also the uh, downstream or those lowland areas which are very much again dependent on the uh, upland or the hills. So mountain areas also are pretty much you know susceptible to uh, global warming which is the result of the rising concentrations of the greenhouse gases that is the ZHGS which we have you know at length discussed in the uh, previous lecture generated by the human activity in the atmosphere. So the Millennium Ecosystem Assessment uh, identified that climate change as one of the uh, major drivers uh, which, which are posing ad adverse effects on uh, biodiversity and also associated goods and uh, services. Now, when, when we talk about mountain, I mean, mountain biodiversity, it is also important to see that water and other natural resources are also, you know, uh, supplied to the lowland areas through the ecosystem services and some of the most uh, world's most threatened and endemic species are actually found in the mountain areas. So the people who inhabit and live in the mountains are dependent on the biological resources and also for increasing and, and also face uh, increasing poverty as a result of uh, uh, climate change. So, Mountains has been uh, recognized as the uh, important ecosystem by the Convention on Biological Diversity and its special program on mountain biodiversity, which aims to reduce the loss of uh, biological diversity in the mountains at the global, regional and national levels by uh, 2010. So there are enormous impediments to this because of various drivers of uh, global change including climate change. And there is also an uh, evident interconnections between uh, climate change and biodiversity, not just uh, with, with regards to the impacts of uh, climate change on biodiversity, but also in uh, concomitant changes. Uh, occurring in the carbon, uh, carbon and water cycles. Now, as I had outlined that uh, mountains are early indicators of climate change. For instance, as the glaciers recede and, and slow, snow lines move upwards, river flows are likely to change and, and alterations in water flows regime may lead to uh, plethora of social issues and affect uh, hydropower generation and then the biodiversity, forestry and also agricultural based livelihoods and overall uh, well-being of the people. Now some of the preliminary studies uh, which, which are being done in the Himalayan areas seems to be you know warning more than the global average rate and then and, and temperature increases uh, are, are greater during the winter and, winter and autumn uh, than during the summer and also increases are you know larger and higher uh, at, at, at higher altitudes. So it has a social and economic impacts and also you know how it also in some way influence the economy that is the agriculture, livestock, forestry, tourism, fishery uh, and, 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 and so on. So uh, one can actually you know think about the way in which how these uh, uh, you know multifaceted issues can be encountered as a consequence of uh, climate change. Now as we are discussing you know uh, the region of uh, eastern Himalayas, it is important at this point to be, you know, uh, we're aware about, you know, which, which, which is uh, the areas which are being covered when we talk about the eastern Himalayas. So the eastern Himalayas actually lie between 
82.70 degree east and 100.31 degree east longitude and 21.95 degree north to the uh, 29.45 degree north uh, latitude which is covering uh, a geographical area of uh, 5024 uh, square kilometer sorry 524 uh, square kilometer so the regions actually extends from the uh, Kaligandaki Valley in the central Nepal to northwest Yunnan in China and also includes countries like Bhutan, parts of India uh, that is the northeastern Indian states and the Darjeeling hills of uh, West Bengal and, and, and southeast Tibet and parts of Yunnan in China and, and also the northern Myanmar. So these five countries has different uh, geopolitical and socio-economic system as well as diverse cultures and ethnic groups. So the eastern Himalayas region uh, with, with its mountains, valleys and floodplains is physiographically diverse and uh, ecologically rich in natural and crop related biodiversity. It is also significant from the uh, geopolitical, environmental, cultural and ethnic perspective and in terms of its uh, uh, ecosystems and the tectonic uh, orogeny of the encompassing Himalayan mountain in, in, in the mountain system. The low, whereas the lowlands are you know, uh, characterized by braided rivers emerging from deeply uh, dissected foothills and uh, converging into slowly meandering rivers further downstream. Now, the forest uh, of the uh, eastern Himalayas again sustained uh, many rivers which, which are of course the lifeline uh, for provinces and also countries uh, downstream. So, the eastern Himalayas according to you know Brooks et al in, in, in their study uh, you know categorize uh, uh, the region as the crisis uh, eco region, uh, biodiversity hotspots, uh, endemic bird areas and, and mega diversity countries and also uh, global 200 eco regions. Now, threats to biodiversity from uh, climate change could be acute in the eastern Himalayas, uh, which are, you know, again, uh, rich in uh, endemic species that have uh, narrow and, and, and restricted range of uh, distribution. Fragmentation and also loss of habitat are also threatening the survival of uh, some endemic species such as the golden uh, langur. So, the rivers and uh, landscapes provide uh, valuable goods and services uh, not only by providing uh, water and biodiversity, but also by providing such as uh, soil retention, climate regulations, carbon, carbon sequestration and providing reservoirs of uh, pollinators, natural predators and uh, others. So, geographically the eastern Himalayas is sandwiched between two densely populated nations that is China and India, both of which have you know massive demands for resources to field uh, economic transformations. And, uh, Fragmentations of uh, ecosystem is evident as the regions face pressure from uh, migrations, economic development, uh, populations uh, as well as from what we are going to discuss that is climate change. So, the region is again the eastern Himalaya is again uh, you know considered as multifunctional because they provide a diverse range of uh, ecosystem services that is uh, provisioning, uh, regulating, cultural supporting. 
So, this also makes them uh, useful uh, for studying the relationship between loss of biodiversity and also loss of uh, ecosystem services. The survival of these ecosystems and, and, and the wildlife uh, within them is being threatened by uh, human uh, activities such as uh, timber harvesting, intensive uh, livestock grazing, agriculture expansion into the forest land and above all by the climate change which is uh, one of the recurrent issue in the past few decades. Identifications and uh, understanding of key ecological and socio-economic parameters of the mountain ecosystems including their you know sensitivities and vulnerabilities of climate change uh, has become crucial for planning and, and, and for the uh, planners and policy makers for the environmental management and, and, and sustainable development uh, of, of mountain regions as well as the uh, downstream areas. Now, uh, recent scientific opinion uh, which is led by the intergovernmental uh, panel and uh, on, on, on panel on climate change that is IPCC is that uh, global climate change is happening and, and, and will present uh, practical challenges to local ecosystems. The analysis and uh, predictions showing an increase in the uh, magnitude of climate change with altitude in, in terms of both temperature and uh, variations in uh, precipitation. Now, as a consequence of which, uh, it is being projected that people in the mountain region uh, are likely to be affected directly by changes in climate change and, and there would also be you no know, impacts on the river basins. Uh, downstreams and eventually the impacts would have uh, global consequences. Now, according to the IPCC, at, at the current rate of climate change, even the most uh, stringent mitigation efforts would be ineffective in, in, in counteracting all its uh, negative impact. And as we all know, many factors have actually you know, contribute to the uh, loss of uh, biodiversity such as uh, habitat loss and fragmentations, colonizations by invasive alien species, overexploitations of uh, uh, resources, pollutions, nutrient uh, loading and global climate change. So, the threats to biodiversity arising from climate change are very acute in the uh, Eastern Himalayas region as, as, as the region is you know rich in threatened and endemic species as I have already outlined. Now those five countries which we have identified uh, <coughs> which comprises of the Eastern Himalayas are again signatories to the 1992 convention on biological diversity and their commitment to renewed during the World Summit on Sustainable Development uh, in, in, in 2002. So, what are the you know, knowledge which involve in climate change? Now, in 2004, the Convention on uh, Biological Diversity adopted the program work on the uh, mountain biological diversity with the overall purpose of achieving uh, significant reductions of loss on uh, mountain, bi bi mountain bi biological diversity by uh, the period that is 2010. So, therefore, natural e ecosystem plays a, a significant role in the carbon cycle and hence uh, acts as a source and sinks for uh, the greenhouse uh, gases. They are also, you know, extremely vulnerable to the impacts of uh, climate change. Now, some of the you know uh, ideas that is uh, during the course of this you know century, the resilience of these many ecosystems that is their ability to adapt 
naturally is likely to uh, be exceeded by an unprecedented combinations of change in climate and change in other you know global uh, change uh, drivers now uh, why is the mountain ecosystems again important uh, as, as, as I have you know uh, outlined that ecosystems are of uh, fundamental importance uh, to the environmental functioning and, 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 and sustainability as they provide many goods and services which are critical to individuals and uh, societies. So, these goods and services for, for instance may include providing you know food, fiber, food and, and shelter and also medicines and energy and it can also consist of processing and storing carbon and nutrients. Uh, purifying water, uh, regulating water runoff and uh, moderating floods because when the, many of these uh, uh, mountain ecosystems becomes you know uh, uh, imbalanced and, and uh, uh, susceptible to change as a consequence of different uh, challenges. Uh, we also you know normally uh, encounter you know uh, sudden floods and uh, which, which cause a lot of problem to people like who are in the downstream. So, uh, uh, why is it that these mountain ecosystems are again critical is because it helps in building soils and uh, reducing soil uh, degradations and also uh, in terms of providing you know uh, opportunities for recreations and uh, tourism. So, climate change is pretty much uh, an integral part of the mountain ecosystems and uh, organisms have adapted to their uh, local climate uh, over time. So, we are going to talk about the issues of adaptability at a later part of discuss our discussion. Now, human societies depend on uh, ecosystems for, for the key, I mean the, the issues of uh, you know uh, uh, provisioning, regulating and, and also cultural and supportive services for their well-being. And then we also discuss in later part of how this climate change has impact on the well-being and, and health of those uh, communities. Now, traditional resilience is again being uh, rapidly eroded leading to dependence on external inputs and uh, over exploitations of selective resources threatening their uh, sustainability. Now, as I have pointed out that uh, people do have certain you know indigenous or traditional knowledge to you know uh, adapt or their coping mechanism with, with regards to any kind of changes. But when, when the changes are too rapid, they are simply you know uh, incapable to encounter such kind of changes. So, as a consequence of which it, it requires certain kinds of external you know interventions uh, in, the, in the form of you know aid or you know certain kinds of you know parameters uh, that would in some way enable them to you know uh, adapt or cope with the kind of changes. Now, when we talk about hazards and disasters, now for instance, uh, Floods normally pose a lot of threat uh, to the riparian uh, communities and, and, and uh, which, which of course has uh, uh, likely to you know uh, pose a lot of you know uh, uh, changes in terms of you know their uh, vulnerability because uh, uh, their economic and then their uh, uh, positions has in some sense uh, you know becomes uh, much more uh, in there they are, they are more re, uh, rather than being resilient they are more you know vulnerable so the eastern himalayan regions has uh, you know over this years uh, witness uh, unprecedented uh, melting of the permanent glaciers and uh, 
uh, the recent uh, glacier melting and flood, flood which was uh, you know uh, uh, witness in, in, in the state of Uttarakhand a uh, few uh, months back uh, was also one of the glaring examples of you know how the melting of these permanent glaciers has posed a threat uh, to people who are actually living in the lowland or downstream areas. So, with the amount of this was uh, Himalayan glaciers showing the fast rate of you know uh, retreat resulted uh, in, in, in increases in the glacial runoff and uh, uh, glacial lake uh, uh, outburst floods and uh, an increase uh, frequency of even such as floods uh, in, in, in the form of floods, mud, uh, mud flows and avalanche uh, affecting uh, not just uh, uh, local biodiversity but also you know more importantly the human settlements. So, some of the other you know uh, elements which, which, which pose a threat or risk is you know the earthquakes. Uh, because again many of these mountainous regions uh, lies in you know the uh, seismic region which are very prone to earthquake and, and, and therefore earthquake actually pose another risk in the region and, and can amplify the potential impacts on the climate change and uh, uh, at, at, at the same time exacerbate uh, their vulnerability. And uh, the recurrent uh, frequent slope failure, uh, mass wastings and, and, and landslides along the Himalayan regions are again evidence of these uh, reinforcing stresses uh, causing uh, ecological damage and also uh, a lot hell amount of economic losses. Now, some of the drivers of genes and uh, economic uh, stresses can be you know outlined here. Now, as we have discussed that uh, many of the studies or research which are being done uh, in, in many of the mountain, uh, mountainous regions and ecosystem uh, and, and particularly in the eastern Himalayas have indicated that there is uh, a rising temperature. So, temperature rises and uh, reduced precipitations uh, uh, have actually led to you know the alpine meadows and, 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 and shrubs may migrate to places higher up in the mountains and uh, wetland areas that is water in the surface areas will shrink in, in, in response uh, to the high uh, evaporations which, which is further exacerbated by the expansions of settlement in, in other uh, human activities. So, uh, the ecosystems in the eastern Himalayas are you know being uh, impaired and uh, destroyed by a wide uh, variety of human activities as we have already outlined like uh, timber extractions and, and, and also you know uh, deforestations for various purposes. And uh, so, there is you know an extensive and excessive exploitation of this uh, uh, ecosystem. So, the survival of the ecosystems and, and, and wildlife in the eastern Himalayas uh, is, is being uh, threatened by uh, human activities uh, like uh, timber harvesting, intensive grazing by uh, livestock because most of these regions are again you know uh, areas where uh, a lot of you know uh, grazing of uh, livestock are being uh, carried out and also the you know uh, insistent uh, expansions of agricultural uh, practices or agriculture on these uh, forest lands. So, traits of you know uh, ecosystems are again driven by uh, the process or, or the as a consequence of the you know growth of populations and uh, urbanizations, industrializations uh, and also partly the way in which how the consumption uh, 
uh, behaviors of you know human society have changes. So all this uh, you know add up in some sense has you know posed a threat to the uh, ecosystem uh, in Toto. So as a result, uh, environmental deteriorations uh, in 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 the mountainous is mountainous region is driven by uh, various uh, factors, which 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 includes such as deforestation and uh, overgrazing by the livestock, and also the cultivations of uh, marginal soils which of course you know lead to soil erosion and, and, and it could be you know in the forms of you know landslides and, and so and so forth because soil erosion normally you know uh, you know lead to uh, landslides so and so forth and the uh, rapid loss of habitat and uh, genetic diversity. So one of the obvious outcome is again the widespread uh, unemployment uh, and, and in cases of poverty, health issues and also you know uh, bad uh, sanitation. So these problems are again amplified by the uh, unequal uh, impacts of the ecosystem uh, degradation and also the uh, unequal distributions of uh, benefit from ecosystem uh, services. So, in, in, in the previous lectures uh, when we were talking about some of the environmental ethics, uh, particularly social ecology, Murray Bookchin talks about uh, how uh, the hierarchy uh, uh, which is you know evident in the, the society or in, in, in our social interactions are, are normally about the way in which you know we treat our, our uh, natures or, or the resources. So therefore, one could possibly think about the uh, unequal distributions of benefits in terms of how these uh, you know few sections are actually you know benefiting or reaping, uh, whereas other majority sections are you know being deprived and, and, and marginalized. Uh, at, at the cause of you know the degradations of their uh, uh, resources. So the eastern uh, Himalayan regions again suffers from uh, issues of both uh, water abundance and, and, and also extreme uh, water shortages and uh, acute uh, moisture stress during the, the dry months that is uh, mostly during the you know, winter period, which which adversely affect the ecology and the agricultural uh, production. So, the forest ecosystems are uh, stresses by uh, uh, stressed by these habitat chains and uh, fragmentation, which which occur as uh, humans uh, subdivide the forest plants into uh, even more you know smaller and more isolated sections. And uh, the forest resources are also being threatened by the invasions of the non-native species and uh, pollution also can force stress on the forest trees, especially in the urban, industrial and uh, the heavily uh, populated areas. So one of the uh, most irreversible uh, uh, human society have the you know activities have uh, on the uh, impact on the ecosystem will will most likely be uh, nothing but the loss of the native uh, biodiversity. Now, how are we you know trying to look at uh, you know the bio? I mean, the, how are we you know being uh, uh, sensitive to the changes? Uh, on, on biodiversity as, as a result of or as a consequence of climate change. Now the eastern Himalayan regions again has diverse uh, climatic uh, conditions and also you know uh, a complex uh, topography and, and, and thus contains different types of forests and uh, vegetation. So the majority of uh, you know people who are inhabiting the 
region depend on the pastoralism, agriculture and uh, agroforestry systems for their subsistence uh, livelihoods. So, these farming systems uh, support a wide range of uh, agrobiodiversity that nurtures and, and, and maintains the region's uh, genetic resources, uh, particularly for food, nutrition and also uh, economic uh, prosperity. So, we have partly you know discussed all this when we had discussed in the section the natural resource management, how people are being dependent on the you know <clears throat> surrounding resources. So, the consequences of uh, biodiversity loss from uh, climate change are uh, pretty much likely to be uh, greatest for the poor and marginalized uh, people who are very much you know depend uh, dependent on the uh, or, or almost exclusively on the natural resources that is for their you know everyday uh, to fulfill their everyday needs or in other words the for their subsistence uh, economy. So, uh, if, if you look at the land cover and, and, and land use changes uh, which, which of course can, can lead to uh, issues like uh, deforestations land degradation, uh, habitat modifications and, and, and forest uh, fragmentation uh, besides transmitting uh, positive feedbacks to the uh, climatic system and, and, and thereby uh, accelerating you know the process of these uh, issues of this climate change. Now, the eastern Himalayas contains uh, again the numerous critical habitats and, and, and species. So, the extreme uh, relief of the mountains uh, coupled with uh, uh, monsignal vagaries has, uh, has actually led uh, you know uh, communities in, in a much more vulnerable uh, to natural hazards and, and, and disasters such as uh, floods landslides and, and, and droughts. Now, uh, when we talk about these uh, issues of uh, vulnerability to natural hazards like floods, uh, one can also talk about the you know uh, adaptations or coping mechanisms and also interventions in, in, in flood affected areas uh, during and after the, you know the flood and the development uh, poverty perspective and, and who are actually you know the uh, vulnerable uh, communities, what are their socio-economic and, and political conditions. So, the climate variability that is how there is again the you know uh, uh, for instance uh, one can perhaps uh, talk about that what disaster is you know disaster can be natural and, and, and unnatural. So, disaster is uh, uh, some kind of you know interferences from uh, interferences which, which actually you know disturb the natural process. So, when we talk about uh, say uh, the issues of you know floods, uh, one can perhaps you know uh, raise a question that is, is flood a boon or a bend. So, Flood, of course, you know, enhances cultivations in, 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 in terms of you know the rich soil uh, fertility, and and and, and uh, agriculture productivity in some sense uh, increases as a consequence of you know flood. But the problem with flood is that uh, the floods normally stays too long, and and, and it comes at uh, irregular intervals. So then. Uh, one can actually link with you know the climatic ch changes where you know floods actually you know arrives at a very you know wrong time which is you know pretty much within the uh, knowledge system of the uh, communities concerned. Now, when the frequency of these uh, floods increases uh, the, the people become you know vulnerable and then uh, they, 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 they can't really you know adapt or their coping mechanism simply becomes you know weakened. So, how then people become vulnerable? 
Now when you do not have enough time to recover from uh, uh, the last event example uh, for instance uh, uh, celebrating uh, a festival uh, every month though festival is you know uh, fun and uh, it involves a lot of you know you know uh, social interactions so and so forth. But, but if it comes to you know celebrating uh, festival almost every month which is not actually you know uh, good for not that positive for everyone therein lies the problem. So, therefore, frequency of occurrence of flood has increased and uh, the time period has actually changed uh, at a you know national and global level. So, how can people you know uh, <coughs> successfully adapt to these changes is some of you know the issues one have to really you know look into when we talk about uh, the vulnerability and uh, hazards like floods, landslides or droughts or whatever it may be. So, the fragile uh, Himalayan ecology facilitates mass uh, wasting when intense of these uh, precipitations occurs. So, changing climatic conditions are pretty much likely to modify the frequency of the outbreaks and intensity. And, and, and climate change you know directly affects uh, human well-being through uh, extreme weather events and also indirectly through a uh, reduction uh, in, in, in terms of water quality and quantity and, and, and also the poor sanitations uh, which of course lead to higher incidence of water related uh, diseases. So, uh, let, let us try to look at some of the potential you know impacts of climate change and also the, uh, the, the implications for biodiversity and uh, human well being. Now, as we had you know uh, by now familiar with what uh, climate change is and then to what extent it is you know projected to pose a kind of threat. So, climate change is projected to compound pressures on the natural resources and also uh, environment associated with uh, uh, rapid urbanization, industrialization and also economic development. So, certain you know uh, policy development uh, agendas are you know or programs are being carried out for instance mining, uh, building of dams and then also uh, various other constructions of roads or any 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 forms of you know constructions of infrastructures. So one of the biggest challenges to Eastern Himalayas is to you know adapt to the impacts of uh, climate change by uh, integrating responses to climate change and also uh, the adaptation measures in, into strategies for you know poverty reduction. So, that balances needs to be in some sense strike out, strike out. And, 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 and therefore the problem lies in you know where as a consequence or as a result of climate change where people are you know being uh, pushed to abject poverty. So, unless that is being balanced, so that very questions of ensuring sustainable development uh, remains a big question. And, and again as, as, as we all know mountains are pretty much you know susceptible to the impacts of uh, rapidly changing uh, climate. Now, this uh, <coughs> uh, table again which I borrowed from the ICI MOD uh, report. So, if, if you look at the ecosystem impacts that is when uh, changes in, in climate and, and, and climate variability interact with the existing stresses. So, the first one the ecosystem uh, has you know different uh, which, which consists of multiple ecosystems, forests, wetlands and, and fresh water system. So, the existing stress which we uh, you know face are uh, the non-native uh, invasive species and also air and, and of course, water pollution, 
fragmentation and also habitat loss, habitat uh, degradations and also you know uh, pollution. So when the interactions with you know climate change, uh, it happens that climate change will probably uh, tend to favor the invasive species over rare and threatened species. And also there is an adverse interactions with climate changes. So fragmentation again may hinder the migrations of some species and also the loss of the uh, native or genetic uh, diversity within fragments uh, will reduce the potential of, of populations uh, to respond to changing conditions to uh, adaptive uh, evolutions. Uh, whereas this habitat loss again uh, reduces the resilience of wetlands to the negative uh, effects of storms uh, because wetlands plays again a very important role in terms of the uh, moderating uh, destructively high stream flows and uh, pollution controlled. So, there is also you know uh, likely that increases in, in frequency or uh, intensity of storms could uh, exacerbate these problems. Also the increase precipitations could also increase uh, the pollution runoff. So the changes in the primary climate change drivers and, and climate system responses in the eastern Himalayas regions within the period 1977 to 2000 can be discussed over here. For instance, the climate change drivers that is the annual uh, average annual temperature increase by 0 0.01 degrees Celsius in, in, in the foothills whereas 0 0.02 degrees Celsius and in, in, in the middle mountains and uh, 0. Uh, 0 0.04 degrees Celsius in the higher Himalayas. And, and night temperatures are actually increased uh, in, in, in most of the eastern Himalayas, uh, particularly in, in, in spring and summer. So most of the you know uh, hill stations and, and also where it is deemed considered to be you know one of the most exciting in, in terms of you know weather and temperature. Uh, for instance, uh, cities like Shillong uh, in, in the northeast uh, region uh, have, you know, over the years people started even using, you know, uh, uh, the fan or maybe an air conditions. So one could actually see the, you know, the rising temperatures mostly, you know, during uh, the night time. And the annual precipitation changes are also quite variable. And then decreasing at, at a site and increasing at a site or uh, nearby. So, what are the you know uh, likely uh, biophysical responses to this climate change? So, the durations of the snow covered uh, reduced, and also snow disappears earlier, uh, and, and and there is a less snowfall, you know, and 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 flow in the river basins reduce or increased and, and the glacier retreat that is 20 to 13 million per year and, and the wetland contracts early spring and late autumn flowering. So one could actually see the way in which how this there is a biodiversity changes uh, when it comes to you know the even taking the period that is 1977 to 2000. So the past 10, 20 years, you know, the many, many studies or different kinds of, you know, changes is also again being expected. So the impacts on biodiversity, so there is a high uh, probability that the res resilience of many ecosystems will be actually undermined by uh, climate change with the rising uh, CO2 levels. Uh, reducing you know biodiversity and, and also damaging the ecosystems. So the loss of ecosystems and, and, and biodiversity is uh, intrinsically bad for human development and, and particularly the marginalized sections who depend most heavily on the ecosystem services 
will of course bear the brunt, uh, the major uh, uh, brunt will be bear by them. So the increase in uh, gas house, uh, greenhouse gases uh, also you know affects the species compositions and, and, and structures of ecosystem which in turn affects the ecosystem functions. As we all know uh, mountains are you know one of the major source of the you know regions uh, rivers. So the impact of uh, climate change on, on, on hydrology is likely to have uh, significant repercussions uh, not only in the mountains themselves but also in, in populated uh, lowland regions that depend on uh, mountain water resources uh, for domestic agricultural and, and also hydropower generations and industrial purposes. So, the one could actually anticipate the kind of you know problems it is going to uh, cause and then what are the likely repercussions it will have if you know the event taking the cases of uh, a climatic change on hydrology alone. Now the impacts of water with, with the rising temperature again uh, there is changes in terms of the runoff patterns and also the increased uh, water evaporations will impact on the distributions of water uh, and on the timing of uh, how it flows. So water quality is again expected to decrease uh, drastically. Uh, that is increasing the risk to human health. So it is likely that uh, tropical cyclones will become uh, uh, more intense as oceans warm or, or, or it is also sometimes becomes very much uh, frequent and uh, unpredictable. And one could also see that in the last few decades uh, lots of you know uh, tsunamis and then a lot of you know uh, storms have actually been uh, witnessed. Uh, it is not that it is not being witnessed earlier, but the intensity or the impact which it has had uh, or the adverse impact it has has uh, really you know uh, the, the intensity is pretty much high. So therefore, the tropical cyclones will become much more intense as ocean uh, becomes warmer. And, and the higher, uh, you know, uh, peak speeds and heavier precipitation. So droughts and flood again will become more frequent and, and, and widespread. So you might be, you know, aware of Majuli Island uh, in, in Assam where, you know, uh, uh, a lot of, you know, land masses have actually been uh, soil erosion is one of the main problems which is being caused as a consequence of frequent flooding. So case studies are being you know carried out and a lot of research are being done. So uh, a lot of you know problems are you know being uh, witnessed uh, by the riparian communities and more importantly those uh, uh, the islanders. And, uh, which have actually led to the loss of their agricultural lands uh, because of the frequent floods. And uh, as I had outlined that when the flooding stops, so many of those waters which have floated actually uh, takes a lot of time to actually dry it out or uh, flowing back because there is a change in terms of the soil topography and uh, which, which of course have posed a lot of problem to those uh, communities who are dependent uh, on, on agriculture and uh, various other mm -hmm. livelihood uh, possibilities. Now one of the impact of the surface water like surface water availability is that uh, water availability in terms of both temporal and spatial distribution is expected to be highly vulnerable to uh, climate change that is because the growing populations and the concentrations of populations in urban areas will again exert increasing pressure on water availability and water quality. And one could also see that 
many of the wetland areas which we have are actually you know being developed and then being filled up and uh, uh, loads of you know uh, colonies are being built and uh, one could also see in the cases of uh, you know uh, cities like Chennai and then various others where man-made disasters uh, have actually been witnessed uh, because right there in the uh, middle of the city you know one could actually see the floods. So, there is also you know uh, the potential changes in the precipitation that is amount of seasonality will affect uh, soil moistures, groundwater reserve and the frequency and of flood and drought uh, episodes. So, there is a growing concern that climate change uh, may accelerate the damage of wetlands and, and, and fresh water ecosystems such as lakes, marshes and uh, rivers. Uh, wetlands are again pretty much highly vulnerable to hydrological changes not only in terms of quantity and quality, but also in the frequency durations and timing of the water availability. So, uh, wetlands are again important because as I had already outlined, uh, they, they, they to some extent help in terms of you know controlling the floods and also pollution. So, the likely impacts of climate change on human well-being is that the symbiotic relationship which, which exists between human culture and the ecological system. So, this relationship is again very evident in the eastern Himalayas because some of the world's most uh, fragile ecosystems are again being affected by uh, rapid warming and uh, indigenous peoples have uh, you know become sentinels for a uh, world uh, undergoing climate change and the eastern Himalayas in effect that is a global change barometer. So, the livelihoods of the subsistence farmer and the uh, pastoral community who make up a large portion of the rural populations could be negatively affected by uh, such changes. So, climatic changes are again uh, predicted to reduce the livelihood assets of the poor people after the part uh, and, and rate of this national economic growth and also undermine the regional food security due to changes in natural systems and, and, and infrastructures. So, when we talk about uh, the issues of livelihood, we also tend to miss out that uh, the eastern Himalayas regions that is the ecological systems are also uh, social and culturally or, or, or religiously pretty much you know uh, interconnected with the people because there are a lot of you know sacred uh, forests and, and, and which is very much you know uh, uh, significant to those uh, cultural and ethnic identity of the uh, local populist. So, the impacts of on health climate change will have a wide range of uh, health impacts all across the region. For example, increase in the malnutrition due to the failure of food security strategies, uh, stress, disease, injury due to extreme weather events. So, uh, there are possibilities of endemic morbidity and mortality due to disease primarily associated with floods and droughts. And uh, changes in temperatures and precipitations could also expand uh, vector borne disease into a high altitude locations that have uh, hitherto have been unaffected. So, the responses to climate change. So, many communities have actually you know adopted and, and continue to adapt to environmental changes in terms of you know their different forms of you know farming system or crops which are being sown. So, in food productions, they maintain a portfolio of you know crop species and varieties to adjust the cropping pattern and also you know the crop calendar to the prevailing and anticipated changes in the growing environment. So, in the extreme cases, what people does is migrate to a more benign environment and, and reconnect with new sets of ecosystem services. However, this sort of exercise is a very painful process because people have to 
learn and unlearn many of their you know knowledge system with regards to the ecosystem. So the perceived changes in, in, in the primary climate uh, change drivers and climate uh, system responses in the eastern Himalayas are the some of the climate change drivers are that temperatures have been rising across the entire region which is a known fact which is an undeniable fact and uh, with winter and you know spring temperatures rising more rapidly than those in summer. So the daily temperature range has gone down and the total annual precipitations is increase in some areas and decrease in others. So what are the bio, biophysical responses to this climate change? There is a longer growing seasons, there is a re, 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 reduce in snowfall in frequency and amount. So tree line moving to a higher elevations and, and ice fields contracting and biomass increase in wetlands. So the vulnerability uh, of biodiversity to uh, climate threats are that uh, poverty and biodiversity have emerged as a sources of vulnerability predicated on the synergy between human and biophysical subsystems and uh, mountainous ecosystem. So biodiversity is still valid as a measure of uh, ecosystem resilience. And, and poverty metrics are still relevant for you know calculating or evaluating the autonomous and adaptive capacity of uh, human system. So climate variability and uh, climate uh, change directly increases the vulnerability of people through flooding, drought, changes in average temperatures and, and, and extreme weather conditions. So the Vulnerability in the eastern Himalayas region is that population pressure and devastations of natural biodiversity are uh, the main factors that make these places highly sensitive to climate change. Biodiversity is also at the enormous risk, enormous risk of being degraded further as uh, resource extraction is intensified to cope with the threats to food security and uh, improvised strategies for relief and recovery uh, following its disastrous event. So poverty and low human development uh, which makes the poor intrinsically vulnerable because they have fewer resources with which to manage uh, the risk. One can also see the you know gender inequalities intersect with climate risk and uh, vulnerabilities because women's owing to their historic at disadvantage such as their limited access to resources, restricted rights and also muted voice in you know shaping decisions make them highly vulnerable to climate change. So lack of uh, climate uh, defense infrastructure that could serve as a buffer, buffer between the risk and vulnerability for example, uh, flood defense systems, water infrastructures, and early warning systems and so forth. So the protected areas, that is the conservation areas and other smaller ones are also considered to be vulnerable as, as they are located within the most vulnerable parts of the eastern Himalayas. So the adaptation policy framework for climate change because there, there are different policies which are being framed. So the development of this adaptation policy framework is intended to help uh, to provide a rapidly evolving process of uh, adaptation policy making with a much needed you know roadmap. Ultimately uh, one of the main purpose of the APF is to support the uh, adaptation strategies and processes that is to protect and enhance human well-being in the face of uh, climate change. So the adaptation policy framework is, is built around uh, four major principles that is to provide you know a basis from which the integrated actions to adapt to climate change can be developed that is adaptations in the short term climate vari variability and extreme events, 
which serve as a starting point which will serve as a starting point for reducing vulnerability to longer term uh, climate change. And adaptations also occurs at a different levels in society including the local level. So adaptation policy and measures should be assessed in uh, development context and, and finally the adaptation strategy and the stakeholder process by which it is implemented are equally important. So the prerequisites for uh, developing these uh, effective uh, adaptation strategies include understanding of the current perceptions and also the coping strategies at the local uh, levels that is in, in dealing with the you know emerging climate change and challenges and also to take into consideration the ecological knowledge systems and ecosystem conditions and also the recognition of the multiple stresses on the sustainable management of uh, resources and, and collaborations between the locals and scientists are some of the you know way forward where you know people uh, the mitigations to climate change can be actually uh, taken into account. So the potential for successful adaptation to climate change in the eastern Himalayas lies in the sustainable natural resources management, uh, poverty reduction, ecosystem and biodiversity conservation uh, and also including the integrated water set management, human development and disaster risk uh, reductions. So if we talk about this mitigation that is the how the conservations of forest and, and, and soil uh, actually offers you know uh, a lot of uh, multiple benefits that is climate mitigations, people and uh, biodiversity. So mitigation actions that have uh, a complementary adaptations benefits and vice versa should be uh, prefer. So the restorations of degraded landscape with vegetations and also implementations of uh, agroforestry system are, are also two examples of the carbon uh, sequestrant benefits can be achieved uh, simultaneously with uh, the reduced soil erosion and, and, and also improve water quality and, and which in turn can enhance or provide biodiversity conservation benefits. So if we are to you know sum up what we have discussed, the effective conservation and, and also sustainable use of natural resources are the overarching precepts of uh, sound biodiversity management and humans are you know pretty much integral part of uh, the ecosystem that are now being increasingly exposed to uh, climate stre change stress. So without addressing the socio-economic well-being of people, there is a very little incentive for them uh, not to engage in uh, over exploiting or, or, or to protect biodiversity resources. Therefore, adaptation strategies must be people oriented within the framework of protecting landscapes, ecosystems, habitats and, and species and so on and so forth. And, and so that the anthropogenic interferences are kept, kept to a minimum for natural re resilience to take over and also sustain the uh, ecosystem structure and functions. So uh, traditionally most of these you know, uh, mountainous communities that depend on these biodiversity resources have uh, informal local institutions and, and also customary regulations in place to ensure that external perturbations do not exceed uh, natural resilience beyond a certain threshold. So maintaining uh, resilience in, in ecosystem is the primary objectives of the adaptation strategies for protecting wildlife and habitat which is uh, the enshrined in the IPCC 2007. So activities that conserve biological uh, diversity, 
reduce fragmentation and degradation of habitat and increase uh, functional connectivity among uh, habitat fragments. We increase the ability of the ecosystem to re resist anthropogenic environmental stresses include, including the climate change. So, uh, we have uh, to some extent uh, very briefly looked at why the mountain biodiversity is important and also why the eastern Himalayans are pretty much you know uh, vulnerable uh, when, when it comes to you know the climate change and, and with the various stakeholders and uh, uh, how the you know mitigations or the you know adaptations or the policy frameworks are to be you know carried out uh, which is very much broadly discussed at length by the report which is given by the ICI MOD entitled climate change uh, vulnerability of mountain ecosystem in the eastern Himalayas uh, and also one can you know refer the readings uh, that is anthropogenic threats, threats and biodiversity conservations in Namdapa nature reserve in eastern Himalayas. So, uh, these two readings can perhaps enhance uh, what we have discussed in a nutshell. Thank you.